Welcome back to another My Hero Academia anime vs manga comparison video breaking down season 6 episode 13 and 14 titled Final Performance which happens to be the same title as chapter 294 and Hellish Hell which happens to share the same title as chapter 296. Since the video will be containing two episodes there will be chapters in the video so that you can skip to the latest episode or just episode of your choosing. Like always we will be going over all the changes made from the manga to anime adaptation and of course if you are new to the channel then be sure to subscribe with notifications on so that you don't miss a video and if you want to further support the channel then please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button. To start things off Best Genius gets an added shot showing him using his blackout bind move on Mr. Compress, Shigaraki, and Spinner. For an amazing surprise the anime actually adds in the removed season 5 scene of the league taking over the creature rejection clan's hideout. This was originally supposed to be in the My Villain Academia arc but may makes a return for the anime's Paranormal Liberation War arc with some changes. This time around, the CRC event is told somewhat through the perspective of Mr. Compress instead of Spinner. Some of Spinner's narration about the CRC being living fossils is actually said by him this time around to the CRC instead of it just being a narration. The panels showing the League ending all of the CRC members' lives are cut out with the anime only showing them preparing to end them. The panel showing Shigaraki taking off his father's hand from his face doesn't get adapted either. At the other hideout, we get added flashback shots of Spinner watching Stain's broadcast, and we see a transition of Spinner becoming who he is now. Though I'm very glad the CRC scene and some of Spinner's story was brought back for season 6, it's still kind of disappointing that the scene was told through the perspective of Mr. Compress because there was still a good amount of the discrimination plotline that was removed from the scene, like how Spinner views the word heteromorph and him not being all too fond of it and just the rest of Spinner's thoughts that were removed from season 5 in general. Which this does have me wondering how the anime will handle the discrimination plotline in the future knowing that a good amount of Spinner's development and thoughts on the way heteromorphs are treated aren't entirely in the anime still. Whatever happens in the future I'm very glad the anime still found a way to bring back this scene. Also quick hot take I guess if you could call it that but as someone who is a minority, I really love the way Horikoshi handled the discrimination plotline in the manga so far, but I'll share more of my thoughts on that in a separate video. Switching back over to the present, Muriel gets some added dialogue when Mr. Compress gets out of Best Genius's binding. For another amazing addition to the anime, we get some more anime-only scenes showing the peerless thief Oji Harima, aka Mr. Compress's great-great-grandfather, in action and someone talking to a young Mr. Compress about their bloodline. After this, we get a little added scene showing Nejire and Ida fighting off some near high-end Nomu. After the intermission, the anime adds in a really nice anime-only scene where we see Burnin and the other heroes fighting the Nomu, and a hero called Master Driller ends up having the top half of his body bitten off by a Nomu while simultaneously drilling through the Nomu's brain. It was honestly really shocking to see that happen. I don't know why, but it really had me flat flabbergasted that Bones even bothered having a scene like that for the anime. But I really liked this scene as it showed how devastating this war really was when it came to heroes losing their lives. When Deku spots Todoroki, the detail of Makia's foot being in the background is removed. Once Spinner puts on the hand on Shigaraki's face, the anime adds in shots of Shigaraki's house and family, and Deku even gets an added scene of him and Danger Sense reacting to Shigaraki. Shigaraki's shockwave. Burnin gets an extra scene and some dialogue when the Nomu all head to Shigaraki's location. Mr. Compress and Makia get some added shots. Spinner, Ida, and Nejiri get some added dialogue as well. The entire scene showing Mirio, Shoto, and Ida being stopped by All for One, plus the scene of Deku struggling to get up, was an anime only addition. Of course, shout out to Kachiro Honjo for animating the extended scene of Deku using Black Whip Froppy style to make it to All for one. It looked so clean and was definitely an improvement on the manga. For the final additions to the episode, the anime adds in extra shots of the heroes and the destruction caused by the war. The Might You OST from the Heroes Rising movie and season 4 makes a return to the episode and a shot of Deku passing out is added in. The episode ends with Deku noticing that Shigaraki needed saving. Now episode 126 covers a total of about one 
one and a half chapters, them being the rest of chapter 294 and chapter 295. Moving on to episode 14, Hellish Hell. First off, we have to talk about the new opening called Bokura no by Eve, and honestly, probably the best opening we have had so far in the series. The visuals and animation in the opening alone was something that you would expect to see in one of the My Hero movies. Lady Nagant looking like an absolute menace and I can't wait for the anime to get to her and Deku's interaction. The parallels between Deku and Shigaraki and how they both needed to be saved was perfect and can't forget about how good vigilante Deku looked in animation. Now let's get into the episode which does somewhat jump around the timeline a tiny bit in the beginning of the episode where it shows the All Might statue with the I Am Not Here board hanging on it which is something that we see happen two days after the war and the Tartarus breakout. For a bunch of anime only scenes we get to see the Redestro clone making his way to the Hero Public Safety Commission's building and the initial ambush on Redestro within the meeting. Originally in the manga we only see the aftermath of the ambush on Redestro seeing the clone mid dissolving. Deku also heavily narrates the first half of the episode recapping the majority of the war arc but he does reveal early that Madam President actually died in the Redestro ambush which doesn't get mentioned till the final war. Towards the end of the recap when Deku brings up that Shigaraki had escaped the anime doesn't adapt the pages showing all of the heroes who came to help trying to stop Shigaraki from escaping with the seven near high-end Nomus. After the recap we get some more anime only stuff where Deku gives us some more insight on what happened after Shigaraki escaped such as the heroes all pretty much denying their being work-study students involved during the actual fight against Shigaraki. In the report we see the shots of Giganto Maki and Mr. Compress are slightly different compared to the manga. In the manga it was shown that the people were in the process of actually trying to lift Giganto Magia in the sky and for Mr. Compress it already looked as if he was in the hospital being treated for his wounds. There's also an added shot of the Nomu being restrained in a maiden plus an added shot of the destroyed quirk erasing bullet machine. Right after this the anime extended the scenes of Redestro and Geten losing their battles and for some detail removed Ed shot in the anime looks a lot less battle damaged compared to his manga counterpart. The panel of trumpet being rounded up with a ton of other villains under the villa didn't get adapted in the anime. When Deku says that all of the Liberation Army bases were hit at the same time, the anime adds in shots showing the other bases being raided and the police arresting more villains. Switching over to the heroes rescuing the civilians, we get an added shot of the destruction with an Endeavor plush sitting atop all the rubble which most likely belongs to the kid we see stuck under the rubble with his sister trying to save him. For a lack of detail the anime lacks a heavy amount of smoke and fire in the background when we see all of the destruction caused in the city. When comparing it to the manga the smoke and fire makes it look so much more devastating. Ochako gets an added shot of her lifting the piece of rubble off of the man's wife and she gets some added dialogue of her telling the couple to get to a nearby shelter. The panel of the rubble with a bunch of blood on it was removed from the anime and replaced with added shots of the heroes saving more civilians. The scene showing Momo, Kirishima, Mina, and the others finding the dead body of Midnight was made super emotional for the anime. The characters all had some heartbreaking dialogue and in the manga when they find Midnight we only get to see their reaction to finding Midnight. So the added dialogue plus extra scene of of Setsuna in total shock along with all of the others in total shock telling Momo about the death of Majestic was the cherry on top of an emotional scene with an already amazing performance done by the voice actors. In Deku's narration the anime adds that Garaki was the one who pointed out that Shigaraki only came back to life by his dreams and hatred. For the final change in the episode the panel of Shigaraki floating in the void isn't adapted for the episode. 
episode. The episode ends with All for One telling the Nomu to now go free the real All for One out of Tartarus. Now, episode 14 covers one chapter and three pages, them being chapter 296 and three pages from chapter 298 that covered the Redestro clone portion of the episode. I'd say my only real complaint for the episode was the recap of the war. To me, I felt like it wasn't really needed because the anime was only gone for one week, but besides that, when it got to the canon material, the episode was really good. The highlights for me was definitely the brand new opening and the ending and the ending of the episode because we are finally getting into the Tartarus prison break stuff and it's going to be amazing to see in the next episode. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on both episodes 126 and 127. Did you enjoy the return of My Hero Academia? What are your thoughts on the brand new opening and are you ready for the Tartarus escapee slash villain hunt arc? Let me know everything in the comment section below. With that said, thanks for tuning in to another My Hero Academia anime versus manga comparison video. If you enjoyed the video, then be sure to Detroit smash that like button below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.